good evening there. Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we are out under the stars again. I'm out with uh, Sean. Sean volunteered uh, to, to taxi me here uh, to shoot the Milky Way core beside a road. Because yeah, I'm walking on uh, crutches. As you might know, I broke my leg six weeks ago. But I'm out again and I'm super hyped because it is clear. Uh, we don't have astro darkness at the moment. The sun will not set uh, below 16 degrees, but you know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're just gonna do it. And uh, yeah, it won't be the most exciting composition because I can stand for maybe uh, five minutes and I can walk for 500 meters with the crutches. But you know what? We're just going to enjoy the night sky and I think I'll cover some basics. So um, let's set the stuff up. Let's first take a look at the very basics of astrophotography planning. Subject. What are you going to photograph? Not everything in the night sky is available year round, nor in a good position at the same time in the right direction. There are lots of planetarium style apps and websites available, but my favorite is the web interface of Stellarium. Tonight we want to photograph the Milky Way core. We first see that there is still a moon in the sky until about 1 o'clock. After that we go into the darkest part of the night where the core sits in a south-southwest direction. So uh, while it is getting dark, we see uh, the Milky Way coming out. Sickness is right above us. And uh, yeah, let's first talk a bit about the different ways you can shoot the Milky Way or any astro shot. Back to basics. Um, well, the first and most simple way is just to use a single exposure. And what I mean by that, you just use a normal regular ball head. You put your camera on and depending on what lens you have, you can shoot for example for 15 seconds. Uh, you put your ISO high and your aperture wide open and uh, that's it, that's it. And you can really get some good results with that, especially if you are in a dark location. On La Palma I've done some single shots and that was brilliant. Right now we are sitting in a Bortle 4, 5-ish zone, so that's not great. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's first see what comes out if I just use a simple single exposure. But wait a minute, Wartel 4, 5, what am I even talking about? It all has to do with choosing the right location. For nightscape photography you want to try to get yourself under the darkest skies possible, for obvious reasons. I use lightpollutionmap.info. Tonight the Milky Way core will be low on the horizon in the south-southwest, so a location where the skies are dark not only right above, but also in the direction we are shooting is what we are looking for. I also suggest to scout Google Maps for potentially interesting compositions in the area. It also helps to check out the location in daylight first to see if there are other unexpected things you should take into account, like accessibility or unexpected streetlights. In my case, I knew I wouldn't be able to go too far from the car, so we prioritized accessibility over composition for now. So right now I'm uh, reviewing what settings I will use for single shots. We are in a uh, Bortle 4.5, so <laughs> pretty short. I'm uh, using uh, 13 seconds because at 20 millimeters that gives acceptable uh, stars to my opinion. And uh, ISO I'm now looking at uh, 1600, 3200 at f1.8. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay, so I'll uh, do a stack of 10 and I'll show you the differences. Now sit back and relax. <laughs> Single exposures, stack of 10, let me explain. So one of the main disadvantages of using single exposures is that you need a very high ISO to get enough light to get something visible on your astro shot. Uh, and a high ISO means also a lot of noise. Well, uh, the noise reduction software gets better and better, uh, even built in into Lightroom uh, and such. But there is a much better way to get rid of that noise. Um, as they say, to increase your signal, your real image, and to decrease your noise. So you are in, yeah, uh, getting your signal to noise ratio better. Uh, the technique used is called stacking. And stacking is just basically stacking different shots upon each other, uh, only single shots. You can also do a track, but we'll talk about that later. And by every shot you make, so for example, you make 10 times 15 shots right after each other, uh, the noise decreases and your signal increases. And that's a very good way to, yeah, very simply increase the quality of your single shot. So just shoot 10 or 15 shots right after each other. And there is software, free software, also very good software to stack your images to reduce the noise. 
Let's now take a look at the differences between a single exposure and a stacked result. Uh, as you can see I have made about uh, 10 shots this evening uh, at a single exposure. This is one of them. Looks pretty good. Uh, shot at ISO 1620mm f1.8 at 13 seconds. So uh, yeah, it's uh, exposed pretty well. If you zoom in you can see eh, it doesn't look too bad. There is a little bit of noise. Um, but what would happen if we do a really quick and dirty edit? Normally I would take a lot more time of course to do uh, things in Photoshop etc etc. Let's do it very easy here. Let's say I would just uh, increase the contrast a little bit, maybe decrease the highlights. I want my whites a bit more prominent now to get a bit more punch. Maybe the blacks a little bit down. The clarity would go up so that the Milky Way shines through a little bit more. Maybe a little bit of the haze for the horizon line. And I might think it's a bit too purple for this, so maybe I'll just make it a little bit more blue. Um, yeah, just a really quick and dirty edit, but you get the idea. If we zoom in now, you can see uh, once we have stretched the data, the noise becomes much more prominent. It's not super bad, but um, yeah, we can increase the signal to noise ratio. Uh, by stacking these results. So let's say um, I've already stacked uh, these results and we take the same edit of this shot by uh, copy settings and copy and this is the stacked result. As you can see it's already li a little bit more clean but if we uh, paste those exact same settings so we would do the same edit here you can see that in the single exposure if we zoom in there is yeah, quite a lot of noise and if we compare this with the stacked result and the same region you can see it's a lot more cleaner so uh, especially in the background sky it is much better than than here so yeah that is the advantage of a stacked result compared to a single exposure this is the single exposure with more noise. I hope this translates with YouTube uh, compression. Um, and this is a cleaner result, which is stacked. So one thing that's for sure in this hobby of astrophotography is that clouds will come rolling in, <laughs> as is the case right now. But that gives me some time to talk about the third and even the best method of shooting stars, which is star tracking. Uh, we've talked about single exposures, stacking single exposures, but we could only expose for short periods of time, say 15 seconds. A star tracker uh, compensates for the rotation of the Earth so that we can make one, two or even three minute exposures, for example, without the stars becoming stripes or trailing. Um, the advantage of making longer exposures is that you can use a sharper aperture setting of your lens, so the stars also in your edges will be sharper, but even more so you can use lower ISO settings. So that means you will have less noise, more signal, um, yeah, all in all it will be much much better. And if you uh, really have the time, like I have most of the time if I'm out shooting, is you can also stack tracked exposures. So if the clouds come rolling over, not come rolling in, but come rolling over, I will try to do a stacked track exposure of the Milky Way. But yeah, I'll have to see about that. <laughs> Fortunately, clouds did go away and I could do a stack of tracked exposures. I'll show you the result later, but first something else called our eye. So what do we see there, Sean? The International Space Station. Yeah, man, it's really bright, yeah. right? Awesome. There. Just no. <laughs> in, in, my, in my frame. It's already there. It's already up there, <laughs> yep. up, above us. <laughs> Super bright. Whoa, another satellite is flaring just uh, below it. This is the second time ISS comes over. Yeah. About uh, 45 minutes ago or so, we oh, also no, saw it. Uh, 90 minutes. 90 minutes. Yeah. So it takes about 90 minutes to make a whole round around the Earth. Yeah. And Bizarre. now it's uh, entering my frame, so... Uh. <laughs> you will get a nice stripe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, two frames I hear. <laughs> so while uh, my camera is doing the work, I'm just uh, yeah, looking to the stars, the, the, all the different constellations. There you can see Cassiopeia, it's a W shape. Maybe you can also see Andromeda, it's pointing to Andromeda. And if we move up through the Milky Way, so right in the zenith, right above us, we see the constellation of Cygnus. It's uh, yeah, sort of the shape of a cross, I always say. And then if we dare go down, we're going into the core of the Milky Way. Yeah, 
beautiful stuff. And there above, Sean, you can see uh, clouds come back. <laughs> we can just see the plow, as they call it in the UK, I think. I call it the Big Dipper or Ursa Major. It's the uh, little, little pan and it points to uh, Polaris there, which we use for polar aligning. Another basic part of planning your astrophotography is of course forecasting the weather. Things like wind and humidity will impact the quality of your shots. By far the most important thing though is stay as far away from clouds as possible. There are lots of sources for weather forecasts, all using different weather models. I particularly like windy.com. The advantage of Windy is that you can compare the various weather models to get as much information as possible in one source. As you get ready to go to location, it is wise to check the live weather situation. I mainly use the cloud radar in the app Weather and Radar to base my final go or no go decision on. So uh, it's uh, pretty difficult to get creative uh, if you walk on crutches. Uh, I've sat on my chair the whole time. Sean was able to do some uh, yeah, creative shots with the typical uh, trees here uh, at the Veluwe. Um, but we decided I will make some selfies with the crutches with me looking to the Milky Way. <laughs> Just to remember this night. <laughs> Did I say crutches or crutches? <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, we are now closing down for the night. Um, for me, it was maybe my smallest adventure ever uh, because uh, I was kind of uh, bound to my chair, but hey, after about six weeks being under the stars again, I had the time of my life, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, shots will not be very creative. I've asked uh, Sean uh, to do a uh, yeah, quick selfie as a foreground uh, for me uh, while sitting on my chair and later uh, with the crutches. Maybe that one's better. Yeah, maybe, but, I saw, maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw you running around uh, shooting various yeah. trees and stuff. What, uh, uh, how did I, it go? I shoot uh, multiple uh, Milky Way uh, shots. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there are some lovely trees up here. Yeah, so, uh, maybe some good uh, foregrounds. Cool. I will look at it at home. Did you get much uh, sky time on your tracker? Uh, yeah, the clouds were rolling in, so yeah. it was a little bit bad, but uh, I think uh, two shots 20 minutes and one shot uh, 12 minutes. Okay, yep. nice. Ah, that's pretty good data, I think. How many millimeters? Uh, 15 and 24. 15 and 24, nice. Yeah. So uh, with the 15 you also got sickness, I think? Yeah, the, from the horizon until uh, Zenit, so the sickness, oh, yeah, awesome. it's really awesome. Uh, really curious about your shots, man. Yeah. I, um, Thanks uh, again for taxiing me. No uh, problem, no problem. <laughs> also for helping in uh, setting up the camera because, uh, yeah, I'm a bit disabled at the moment. It's actually pretty difficult to make a video, uh, much more difficult than I expected, to be honest. But hey, uh, I hope I at least covered some basics. Uh, I hope that you learned something and that you enjoyed our time under the stars a little bit. Um, anyway, for now, thank you again for watching and uh, I hope I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.